Hi everyone. Uh, today I'll be talking about barrier removal and rewilding, specifically the design for the removal of small barriers on Irish rivers and incorporating rewilding and natural processes into the, a solution. In the presentation, we will look at different barriers, the problems they cause, and go, go through the new guidance that the OPW has developed to mitigate against small barriers. And we'll touch then on some uh, rewilding and items that the OPW are progressing. So what is a barrier? What we consider as a barrier is a man-made structure that prevents the natural process of a river from taking place. Barriers come in many shapes and sizes uh, and not all are as obvious as being a barrier as others. Here we have some obvious hydroelectric stations, uh, but you can also have weirs that are pleasant to look at, but can be a major obstruction to fish and sediment movement. One of the most common barriers that we have in Ireland are road bridges, which may not have been barriers when constructed, However, because of erosion and scouring have become barriers over time. The last picture here is a hydrometric station, which are numerous throughout the country. And while providing critical data, they can cause them prob problems in themselves. So why are barriers a problem? The natural process of a river includes the movement of sediments and organic matter. A river transports and deposits sediment, which is important for aquatic habitats. Deposition can prevent erosion further downstream and a barrier can hinder the movement of sediment. A barrier prevents fish species from accessing spawning grounds upstream as various fish can't transition past a barrier for a number of reasons. It could be high or low flow, uh, the height difference and things like that. A barrier reduces the possibility of achieving good ecological status under the Water Framework Directive. The Water Framework Directive looks at a new number of aspects like the quality of invertebrates, fish and plant life, nutrients and dissolved oxygen. And the barriers affect a number of these criteria. The OPW have developed a guidance for fish passage on small barriers. The guidance brings the designer through from initial considerations to the final solution. The final solutions may be decommissioning, reconstruction, or improving the barrier. And the guidance develops the improvement options further. The outcome of the guidance is a set of generic design principles for improvements to barrier structures. The first possible outcome we have is decommissioning which is obvious and all around the best solution. You can see it's the complete removal of the structure. Next, we have reconstruction or a bypass. Uh, reconstruction is where the structure can be rebuilt and mitigating measures incorporated into the structure. On the bottom left, you can see a rock ramp incorporated into a weir. A bypass is where a diversion channel is created around the barrier. Finally, and the one we have developed in the guidance is improvement measures. This is where we modify the level and flow transition from upstream to downstream to remove the effect of the barrier. This can be achieved in a number of ways as shown here by the use of rock ramps of variant, various types reducing bed levels and roughening the bed to ease movement for fish. In the guidance, we begin by asking the designers a few questions about the barrier. The ownership, access, site requirements, and most importantly, is habitat value beyond the barrier? From a fisheries perspective, if there is no habitat upstream, then there's little point going to the expense of removing the barrier. This then leads to two options. The first to consider is potential third party issues. Here we look at 
a series of items that may change the course of the process that we take? Is the barrier located in a sensitive environment that may require an appropriate assessment under the Habitats Directive? Are there any issues with the spread of invasives? For example, removing a barrier may increase the spread of something like the crayfish plague if it is present. Therefore, an ecological assessment may be required. Is the site important from an archaeological perspective? If the answer to any of these questions is yes, then a planning process may be necessary and needs to be considered. On the other side, we have fish passage improvement box, where we ask a series of questions on the barrier itself and its function. These will determine if we decommission the structure or proceed to further considerations. The questions are, does the barrier have another use? Does the barrier help to prevent flooding or erosion? And does the barrier affect neighboring structure, structures? This relates to the situation where a barrier holds water and removing the impounded water may have an effect on adjacent foundations. If decommissioning is not an option, then we proceed to the reconstruction or improvement box, where again, a number of questions on structure stability, flooding and improvement measures help us to decide if we reconstruct or implement an improvement measure. For improvement measures, the guidance has developed a matrix where based on certain criteria and objectives, we are provided with a design solution. The criteria and objectives we look at are the target fish species in the catchment, hydraulic criteria such as flow, turbulences and water depth. Structural criteria are like a drop in the water level, channel bed material, and the transition from light to extreme darkness. And then there are maintenance issues. We have developed seven generic principles as improvement measures, and you can see them here on the list. I'm not gonna go through them all, uh, but you can see a few relate to the various types of rock ramps. Uh, the next slide, this slide shows um, generic principle 3B, uh, which is a typical rock ramp with pools. The idea is to transition the rise in water level between pools in jumps that the site specific fish species can manage in all types of flow. Therefore, depending on the height of the barrier, the transition length of the rock ramp will change. The larger the drop, the longer the transition ramps will be. I've thrown in there gen generic principle number four. Um, it's a rock ramp at a gauging station. Um, and again, it's about managing the transition from upstream of the barrier to downstream. And you can incorporate a number of, you know, it can be rock ramps or you may be able to regrade the, the bed level. So there are a number of options you can choose from. And now just a few slides on rewilding. Um, the important thing about rewilding or renaturalization is seeing what the river wants to do and letting it do it as much as possible. So like with barriers, we are introducing natural processes into our flood relief schemes and arterial drainage maintenance programs. The benefits we see are increased diverse biodiversity uh, it will aid climate change adaptation into the future. It provides public immunity space and increases our prospects of compliance with the Water Framework Directive. On this slide, you can see where we are looking to create floodplain storage and connection to the floodplain, uh, and also some channel di diversity by introducing deflectors, pools, and riffles. We also can use integrated constructed wetlands, which can uh, be a public immunity as well as biodiversity gain. Finally, um, we have a pilot study to reconnect river meanders. In the photo on the top right, where the arterial drainage scheme in blue 
is superimposed on the old six inch map, you can clearly see where the scheme cut through all the original snaking meanders. So the OPW is looking to reconnect some of these if possible. This is purely from a biodiversity point of view, although it may also increase capacity or storage, which is an additional benefit. In our flood relief schemes, we are looking to introduce enhancements. And here are just a few examples that we are using. On the left, uh, an artificial badger set. In the middle, there's a bat box incorporated into uh, a flood wall. And on the right, there is a, an artificial otter holt. Again, the aim is to increase biodiversity, create habitats, and generally improve the ecological status of the channel. I'd like to thank you for uh, listening to this presentation and uh, wish you all the best.